Let me tell you what Egypt means. Egypt means being powerless against the powers of darkness. Egypt, it means being powerless against the powers of darkness. Egypt means being oppressed and not knowing the solution. Egypt, it means being oppressed and not knowing the solution. Egypt means being imprisoned and not knowing how to get out. Being in prison and not knowing how to get out. The children of Israel were in that prison for over 400 years. They kept enjoying it until they decided that we can't take this anymore. Then they cried to God. And the Bible said God remembered the promise he made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he said, I will deliver them. Until we are tired of being in Egypt, we will never cry to God for deliverance. Egypt means living under the bondage of sin. Living under the bondage of sin. Beloved, if you find yourself falling into sin uncontrollably, uh, it is Egypt. It is Egypt. I hope you know I'm not talking about the country Egypt today. Hallelujah. That's not what I'm talking. I'm talking about what Egypt represents scripturally for the children of Israel. It was not a pleasant place. Egypt also means toiling hard for others to eat. Toiling hard. They worked hard, but who was reaping the benefit? The Egyptians. They are the one working. Somebody else was eating. <laughs> May that not be your story. When God performed his wonders in Egypt, Pharaoh had no choice but to let the children of Israel go. However, in the process of them leaving Egypt, they got to the Red Sea. <laughs> and they said, where will we go? In front of them is a sea of water. Behind them, that stubborn enemy was still pursuing them. Because Pharaoh said, "Ah, what did we, were we sleeping? How did we release them? He gathered up his army and said, go after them. They chased them to the Red Sea. It was at this point in, at the, by the Red Sea that Moses spoke unto the children of Israel and said, fear ye not. So I've come to tell somebody this morning. If you see yourself between a rock and a hard place, you can't find your way forward and you know you can't go backward. Let me tell you, fear not. The Lord told Moses, he said, why are you looking at me? Move forward. The moment they start to move, what happened? The Red Sea parted. Where there was no way. Where there was no way. Where they thought there's no way we can move forward. God made a way. Beloved, in these last three months of the year, every way that appeared to have closed in the last nine months, God will open the way. I said God will open the way in the name of Jesus. He's God. The same thing he used to deliver his own children is the same thing he used to destroy their enemies. 
the same Red Sea that he used, that he parted, that his own children can walk through, is the same Red Sea that he closed to destroy the Egyptians that would not let go. So, beloved, God will make a way for you. So when we say the Egyptians that you see today, you shall see them again no more forever, it is possible to see them again. No. If you read the scripture very well, after Jesus has delivered a man, what does he normally say? Go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. Because he knew if you continue to sin, you will go back to the state where you have been delivered from. So he tells them, go and sin no more. Don't go back to Egypt. The number one thing that can kick us back to Egypt is sin. What are we to do? Ephesians 5 from verse 15. Ephesians 5 from verse 15. The Bible says, see then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise redeeming the time because the days are evil. He said, therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation. Well, look at that next sentence. But be filled with what? Be filled with what? Say it out loud. Be filled with what? Be filled with what? Be filled with what? Be filled with the Spirit. And when the Bible says Spirit and it capitalizes it, it's talking about the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. So that when they come to look, you are not empty. Lift up your two hands unto God. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May this God make a way for you. In this 10th month of the year, may God make a way for you. Where you have been rejected in the last nine months, I decree over you that the doors are open now. In this 10th month, in the name of Jesus. I command the doors to open. I command the doors to open. I command the doors to open in the name of Jesus. In this 10th month of the year, God will cause your joy to be full in the name of Jesus Christ. I say it again, it will cause your joy to be full in the name of Jesus. The Bible says when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. In this 10th month of the year, may God fill your mouth with laughter. In the name of Jesus. He will give you his grace. He will favor you. In the morning you'll be favored. In the afternoon you'll be favored. In the evening you'll be favored. In the name of Jesus. God will cause you to be of a blessing even to generations to come in the wonderful name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, our Lord and our God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. God bless you and have a wonderful week.